It's a big year for the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers, and we're going to take a look at the top 10 players that will lead the way this season. If you don't know Grayson McCall's name by now, you better get to know it real quick. This kid is a special talent with the ability to make some big-time throws, and we've seen it already in the couple years that he's been a starter for this team. This is an offense that primarily runs through him. He is the commander of this offense, and now he does have to learn a new system with Jamie Chadwell going to Liberty and Tim Beck coming in. But this is a guy who has NFL potential. At one point, we were talking about him as a potential first-round pick, and it's easy to see why. Some of the things that he's able to do with his arm, also with his legs, he is a magician at times with what he's able to do. I think he is one of the more exciting players in college football, someone who definitely has the potential to be a superstar if he's not already. And when you look at his production, he takes care of the football really well. He is someone who knows what to do with the ball when it's in his hands. He is very good at getting it to his teammates, and he does not make a ton of mistakes, which makes that this team is really tough to beat. When you're not making mistakes, if you're not shooting yourself in the foot, Grayson McCall is a big reason why this team has had so much success, and it's going to be interesting to see what they can do in a new system, in a new team, in a new program uh, leader, and in that new culture. Now, one of his top targets is going to be Jared Brown, and regardless of what system you're running, Jared Brown is an explosive weapon that you must utilize. He has speed for days, someone who is going to be a touchdown waiting to happen on any play. It doesn't matter if you get him the ball as he's running deep, whether you get him on a jet sweep. He has speed that changes the game. Defenses have to adjust their scheme to be able to slow him down, to be able to make sure that he doesn't create big plays. That's really hard to do with how close to Carolina can get him open. Now, obviously, this new scheme is going to be interesting, but it's still going to be a relatively similar attack. It may not be as RPO as we saw with Chadwell, but this is an offense full of playmakers, and especially at the skill positions, this is a group that is very dangerous. The guy that emerged last year as a Bonafide star is C.J. Beasley. You're looking at a running back who has the potential to be a star as well, and this is an offense full of them. Now, the running back position is loaded. There's a trio of running backs that we're going to talk about today, and C.J. Beasley is just one of them. I think when you look back at the Georgia Southern game, that hurdle that he produced was one of the more exciting plays that we saw in college football last year, and that's just the beginning. A guy who averaged 5.1 yards per carry, Five touchdowns, also kind of a threat in the passing attack as well. Average 10.2 yards per catch. I'm really excited to see what they do to get him more involved in the offense. Now, it's going to be hard to get touches to all of these guys, but I think this team finds finds a way to get them all involved. Beasley is just one of those players that needs to get the ball in his hands. And this is an offense, once again, that is going to be really fun to watch and really tough to stop. Former Georgia State transfer Sam Pinckney emerged as Grayson McCall's go-to wide receiver outside of Jared Brown. Now, Jared Brown is more of that gadget player that you get the football at any cost. But Sam Pinckney was that reliable threat that was more of that true wide receiver running downfield and nearly had 1,000 yards last year. I think that is the goal for him this year. 71 catches, 996 yards, three touchdowns. This is going to be an offense that looks different, and we don't really know what that's going to mean. With the skill position players they have returning, the running game should still be a heavy feature, but there are also plenty of talented players out wide that can be utilized as well. Sam Pinkney is just one of those guys, and Close to Carolina is in good hands because not only does Grayson McCall return, but there are a handful of wide receivers that are going to make life easy for him. Now we flip over to the defensive side of the ball. This is the interesting group. This group is one of the more talented groups in the Sun Belt, and I don't think that they get enough credit for that. And it, again, losing Jamie Chadwell for the offense was a huge loss, but the defense could also go through a transition. Having a guy like JT Killen coming back is huge. You get a veteran leader who was third team all Sun Belt last year and someone who nearly had 100 tackles. He is a disruptor with six and a half tackles for loss, two and a half sacks, someone who can really make teams adjust their uh, plan of attack. You're looking at a defense that was very disruptive just in general. They were 14th in tackles for loss in the country last year, 27th in sacks. 
this group knows how to get to the wall. Now, they did lose quite a bit of talent up front, but the linebackers should be just fine. We talked about that trio of running backs. One of the guys that is coming back after an injury-filled season is Braden Bennett. He is a player that's forgotten about, honestly, in my opinion, but he is someone who, before C.J. Beasley, was supposed to be this breakout candidate for the Chanticleers. Big-time player, has a great frame, also has good speed to be able to make big plays. He's an explosive weapon that, like like I said, didn't have the production from last year because of those injuries. He is back to being healthy, and how close to Carolina finds ways to get him the football will determine how successful this offense is. Again, there's so many players that need to get touches, and Brady Ben is just another player that can help them in big ways. The final running back that we'll talk about, Reese White. 544 yards, 5.5 yards per carry, 5 touchdowns. He is the veteran of this group, been around for a little while now, knows what to expect at the college football level, and a reliable running back. Now, again, touches is always going to be the concern. How do you get him the football? Because he, and, and I think he is the more traditional running back of the three. The other two you can probably utilize in the passing game. So it's going to be interesting to see where do they put Bennett? Where do they put Beasley? Do they put all three of them on the field? Can you line up Beasley and Bennett in the slot? Are you able to utilize them that way? There's so many options, and there's too much talent, honestly, for this group not to be good again. It's just a matter of how are they going to utilize the weapons they have on campus. Back to the defense, Shane Bruce is another linebacker that could have a tremendous impact on this team. The defense is probably going to be the X factor, if you will, specifically the defensive line. But when you look at the linebacker, this is a group that should be just fine. They have plenty of experience at the second level. Secondary has some players as well, but I think that if you're looking at one level of this defense, that is the stability of the group. It is at the linebacker position. Shane Bruce is another player that can be disruptive. Only four and a half tackles for loss, half a sack last year. I think he takes on a bigger role for the Chanticleers this year. Honorable mention, all Sunbelt player who's looking to do even better in 2023. The final player offensively to talk about is Tyson Mobley. This is someone who probably will f- fly under the radar because of the talent around him. You look at Jared Brown and Sam Pigney, they command a lot of attention. Grayson McCall commands a lot of attention. These are the players that it's the third, second, maybe third string players that are going to see a a lot of favorable matchups you're going to see one-on-one matchups with maybe some lesser talented corners with the nickelbacks with linebackers a guy like mobley could have a big year and this is after a year where he's on a bench and sunbelt selection he is someone that can take a step forward he can take this offense to new heights he can make sure that he has his best season yet because teams are not going to be circling him when they're doing the scouting report now they're going to know who he is but they have other things to worry about. They have bigger fish to fry. Stopping Jared Brown is hard enough as is. And if Tyson Mobley can find ways to break out and make teams pay for leaving him one-on-one, that opens up the field for everybody else too. And finally, we talked about the secondary. Taven Jackson returns to give this Chanticleers secondary a veteran player that can lead the way. Now, I am very interested to see what this defense can do. Because again, they had they they were a pretty solid group. They were disruptive. Now, I would say the the passing attack is really where they got hurt the most. Stopping the pass is going to be something they need to do a lot better because they are 125th in yards per game through the air. Yards per play, they were 119th. They averaged almost 6.5 yards per play last year. That needs to improve. This is a Sunbelt conference that appears to be getting more and more crowded more and more talented and if you're not able to make sure your teams can make stops it doesn't matter what the offense does this is a close to carolina team that has a lot of potential in 2023 even without jamie chadwell the nucleus this group has returning gives them a bunch of veteran players that can get the new guys up to speed now what that means for their success this year not really sure but we know that this group is a proven group even with Tim Beck coming in, Beck has a lot of work. He has a lot, uh, his big shoes to fill with Jamie Chadwell leaving. But I really like what I see from Coastal Carolina. It's just a matter of finding depth and figuring out if those X factors can help them or hurt them this year.